Tremaine decided to sit down with New York Times um, and remind them that he's black or remind us that he's black, remind us of the struggles of black people and again, push this narrative that he's the ultimate streetwear victim. Um, that's what it kind of seems like. Now, I haven't read the article. I'm sure there's more to it. I'm sure there's more breadth to it. I'm sure I'm just only surface level kind of judging what he has to say. But I feel like this whole eternal victim thing this whole narrative about Supreme doing him wrong and being systemically racist. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm kind of tired of it. I really am tired of it. And it's a shame because I feel like the guy is really talented in his own way. I feel like he has a lot to say. I feel like he's a necessary voice. I feel like his story, similar to, um, similar to Patrick Mason, I feel like the Tremaine Emery story is something that a lot of people should use as a blueprint or as inspiration for their thing. Because he's not the conventional fashion designer. He's not the conventional creative director. He didn't particularly go to like an established school to learn this. And from what I know of him from afar, he's always been like a kind of sceny guy. In the same way Heron Preston was, right? Sceny, communications, marketing, core cool type of dude who happened to like use that and segue into kind of building a position for himself where he's a founder cd of a very you know established brand and very well liked brand in dead and tears he had a role obviously at, at supreme that was very really well um you know documented he had a capsule collection with virgil and off-white that he was doing for a little while that art dad's thing and a few other bits and bob helped out with frank ocean this stuff was doozy so he's done all these things in fashion and streetwear and menswear that he probably has no right to do which I think is a uh, more of a that should be more of an inspiration to most people out there, as opposed to trying to follow in the footsteps of like a Mark Jacobs, right? Mark Jacobs is like a once in a lifetime, once sorry, once in a generation sort of level talent. He went to all the right schools, had all the right jobs, but someone like a Tremaine like has come from the mud. So you should be looking at this guy as like, oh shit, if he can do it, I can do it too. But when this guy talks, man, when this guy speaks, it's like, oh come on bro shut the fuck up like enough with this shit and it's weird as well because i don't remember him being like this like i don't know if this is like how he always was whether or not he was always this he had this victim complex all the time or if he's been sullied by the industry maybe he's had so many bad experiences maybe he's been proverbially you know proverbially whipped on the back so many times that now he's been kind of like scarred for life and he can't help but look at the scene with a level of contempt and shit and just keeps vocalizing it because he feels like no one else knows what's going on behind the scenes who knows regardless i'm tired of it um you know profiting off the back of slavery and all that shit is what what it is but i feel like this continual you know blasting and rabbiting on about being a victim and being oppressed like bruh you're a multi-millionaire for putting cotton reefs on the fucking clothes and having a brand that, you know, isn't, you know, doing the most interesting things in the world. But still, you've been able to make a niche for yourself. You've been able to carve out a lane for yourself. You make, you make tons of cash doing it. Incredible. You sell a bunch. You inspire a bunch of people. Um, people seem to love what you do. Like, if anything, that shows you what you can do. Um, despite the things that you say are one of your things holding you back. But regardless, this guy likes to cry foul. Likes to pretend he's a victim. So let's hear what he has to say regarding the New York Times article. So this title is Tremaine Emery refuses to hide his scars streetwear's black history raconteur survived kanye supreme and the near-death experience but can he survive the internet that's hilarious survived kanye you know that's fucking hilarious but anyway let's continue long after sorry not long after tremaine emery resigned the position at supreme we're still talking about that by the way right we're still talking about supreme however many years on well a year on maybe less than that but you think he kind of moved on especially after the interview he did with angelo back where he kind of admitted hey maybe i did some things wrong Maybe it was a miscommunication. But now he's just doubling, tripling down on this supreme systemic racist. The whole world is systemically racist. I'm the most persecuted man in the world, even though I'm a multimillionaire. And yeah, whatever. Let's continue. Not long after Tremaine um, resigned the position at Supreme credit last month, he came across an image of an old hoodie from a brand emblazoned with one of the familiar biting slogans, Illegal Business Controls America. The hoodie is part of Supreme's canon an embodiment of the middle finger approach to appropriation with its use of the signature Futura front lifted from Barbara Kruger and its flirtation with hip-hop radicalism. The phrase comes from the Boogie Down production song. With his fraught tenure as supreme in rear view, it's not in rear view though, is it? He keeps fucking bringing it up. He never not, he never not stops talking about fucking supreme. It's not in his rear view. It's now part of his story. It makes him into a victim. 
it makes him into somebody worth talking about because maybe he thinks without the supreme story no one wants to hear from him which i don't think is true i think he has a lot of interesting things to say but this man will not shut the fuck up about this supreme experience it didn't work out it, this is what it is it's not that deep really but hey what do i know let's continue he'd been hired as the first black creative director but his tenure lasted less than a year and a half to be fair he was hired as the first creative director overall the black thing is unnecessary he was the first creative director that's the main reason why it probably didn't work out because from what i led to understand from what he said and reading between the lines james jebby is still heavily involved in the day-to-day -day running of supreme so even though he hired a creative director who's meant to take off he meant to take some shit off the table for him off his plate it seems like he still has an iron grip on what gets done there which explains why the brand is still where it's at right why it's still at the top because the founder he was around sweeping the fucking floors when they were stocked in Union back in the day. It's still there. So that probably explains a lot of it. But that also explains why it didn't work out for him. Because he's his own boss. He's got his own brand. He's now having to work an office job, basically, and have a boss who is, you know, maybe not good at delegating and whatever. That's obviously going to be a recipe for disaster. But in, in his eyes, it's because James Jebby doesn't like black people. Cool. Anyway, um, he'd been hired as his first ever black creative director, but his tenure lasted less than a year and a half. He left the company citing structural racism in his ranks. Imagine being hired as a first creative director. The first, you get hired as the first black creative director. Then when you get fired, you blame it on structural racism. How does that make sense? But hey, what do I know? I'm a dumb boy. I'm a dumb boy living in my fucking parents' basement. I don't know anything. Cool, let's continue. Um, in part spurned on how the company... Um, bludgeoned a collaboration he'd secured that word bludgeoned as well is so unnecessarily heavy um bl bludgeoned a collaboration he'd secured with the firebrand artist arthur jaffa by the way don't describe me as firebrand because that just sounds like you're you know you're talking about somebody that's angry and black and shit i don't i don't like that word firebrand like, what um supreme the foundational skateboard brand founded by james jebbia turns 30 this year which means it's been around long enough to sow the seeds of his own resistance i respect the legacy said mr emery that doesn't mean i can't question it oh. should we question your legacy should we question your legacy should we question your relevancy should we question your position is that allowed also or is it only one way god almighty this guy so this week, as part of his own brand, Denim Tears, Mr. Emery is releasing a collaborative piece with Alpha Jaffa, um, where very similar to the ones that Supreme ultimately declined to release. Owing to their raw and provocative commentary on black trauma, and he remade the signature hoodie in original colors using the same visual language and a cheeky audacity, but broadcasting a different message. Systemic racism controls America. Having that emblazoned on a hoodie while also having a white wife is wild in my personal opinion i don't fucking care about that sort of shit right because i'll tackle anything that fucking moves don't get me wrong but crying about systemic racism using your brand as a platform to talk about race issues and not never not shutting up about it but then also being okay with you know having a nubian queen or no having a snow bunny as a queen not nubian queen is really funny and I would honestly love somebody to ask me that question. It doesn't actually matter who you fucking sleep with or who you have as a partner. It's no one's business. But I just find that when you're in a business of like, you know, grifting on race, I find it hilarious how most people that do that are always the ones that kind of date outside their race. But anyway, who gives a fuck? Regardless, the hoodie's fucking awful. Um, I'm not having all these slogans on me anyway, even if it was Supreme. I'm not walking around with a fucking racism hoodie on me anyway. Um, but oddly enough, I checked online. The only color that's not sold out is red. And I think maybe black, maybe the gray one. The other ones are sold out. So I'm definitely in the minority. Most people love this shit. Most people love this hoodie. Um, but the funny thing about this is that I remember when this whole thing happened, when Supreme got, when he got ditched by Supreme, I remember saying to myself, like, I couldn't, I couldn't understand why he was so pissed off. Because in my head, I was like, when he got the job anyway, I was like, oh, sick. That would be a chance for him to maybe do, like, not a version of Denim Tears, but to kind of uh, adjust his vision, his style, working under Su Supreme. But it doesn't mean, it, it, I didn't ever think he was going to just take an idea that he would have done at Denim Tears and try and copy and paste on Supreme. It's just not going to work. 
I just assumed they wanted him for his taste level. They wanted him maybe for his references and shit. That would have probably made more sense. Um, but then he seemed to get annoyed that they didn't want to do ideas that probably would have fit his brand more. Like, for instance, that shirt that he allegedly wanted to do with Supreme, the one where it had the, um, what do you call it? The one where it had the flipping image of somebody getting whipped or something, right? Some slave getting whipped or something. That would have worked much better on his own brand. It's still pretty you know hard thing to kind of stomach and see on a bit of clothing especially when you think about most of the people that wear supreme or sorry most people that wear denim tears aren't black unfortunately you'd imagine you'd think so because you know to be a multi-million dollar brand you're probably going to be selling to the majority of people and the majority of people out there aren't black and aren't the ones going to be buying your shit i'd imagine so but who knows i could be wrong but regardless i always thought it'd be a bit strange to have like you know these t-shirts and these things with all these incredibly charged racial images on it worn by some like spotty white kid you know in in the lower east side it just didn't make any sense to me but as an idea for your brand cool do it just do it under your own brand so i don't I, I never understood why this was a beef like supreme turning this down makes sense because maybe it's a little bit too racially charged for them especially now maybe supreme when they were owned primarily by james jebby they would have done it but now that they are owned by this group that owns also vans and North Face and shit, it's probably too much for them to do. Like, James J.B. also has a boss to answer to. So I didn't really see why this was such a point of contention, especially because it fits his brand so well. It's so fucking sold out already. It fits his brand incredibly well. It makes complete sense why this would be a hoodie he'd want to promote and push out there. Like, I don't see why this was an issue in the first place. Anyway, go back to the interview. It's a nod and a nudge, a wink and a slam door. The Denim Tears Jaffa collaboration, Miss Mr. Emery said, a dance between ideologies. This whole situation between me and James Chevia and the Supreme Sweet Sweet helped result in this piece of fashion art and design. Oh, bro, he's not gonna stop talking. About it. He's gonna, he's gonna be talking about. It. He's gonna be like, this is gonna be like how Jeff Staple is with a pigeon dunk, isn't it? Jeff Staple will not shut the fuck up about that shitty fucking pigeon dunk, right? And he has no other good ideas to contribute to the world. So he just keeps regurgitating that one lick that he had back in the day. And I bet you the same thing that Tremaine's going to do. He's not going to shut the fuck up about Supreme until the end of time. This is going to be his thing. It's just annoying because like, I, I, apart from, you know, unlike J Jeff Staple, who's a fucking talentless, you know, one trick pony, I honestly do think Tremaine's got great ideas and is a necessary voice and has a lot to offer. So it's just annoying that he's limiting himself to this victimhood banner and this fucking umbrella he's got way more to offer it's like bro just let this shit go please for the love of god let this shit go anyway it continues it's also a bristling and timely example of how mr emery has for the past few years built upon familiar almost taken for granted streetwear vehicles imbuing them with layered and often unearthed meaning in centering amplifying black stories and perspectives are often alluded to the sector bro all this waffle just to sell fucking cotton reefs on fucking sweats and jeans is mad mad but hey let's just continue denim tears which began in 2019 as a fashion art hybrid project is a forefront of a wonderful rising post supreme streetwear concerns uh awake and why barriers born and raised among them not owned or prayed by white people what what ah oh! now we're trying to say that what fucking streetwear has mostly been a white man like what streetwear has been the one streetwear has been the great equalizer most of the great menswear designers virgil abloh included r.i.p to the dead came from streetwear because streetwear allowed any person with an idea to put an idea on a t-shirt and have it on the same rack as a fucking bottega one that's what streetwear is that's why it's so fucking cool because it's what people actually wear on the fucking street and you can get your ideas out on some easily readily available fucking silhouettes, whether it's a t-shirt, a hoodie, a beanie, a cap, a pair of jeans, and everybody can wear that shit, and you can have your shit on the same level as some of the high fashion brands out there. That's what makes it amazing. Level playing field for all. All. Whether you're black, white, whatever, fat, small, one hand, one eye, no one fucking cares. You got good ideas, you got cool bits, you got some nice pieces, we're going to buy it. We might even queue outside your store to fucking buy it. Making this into like streetwear was this dominated by white. It's like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, what are you talking about? Have you seen what queues look like? 
from the beginning of the dawn of fucking queues outside the stores from sneakers they're, they're, they're a fucking smorgasbord of people from all walks of life fucking hell bro like what the fuck is this anyway let's continue not owned or operated by white people it's also been able to scale quickly thanks to collaborators uh it, it's it was just funny right you don't like you don't like whites but you collaborate with levi's okay wh whatever whatever it, 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 it's good it's been able to scale quickly thanks to collaboration with levi's converse our legacy dior uh, it's pan-african flag tweets on rough Lemon designs the most what especially our legacy you couldn't get a more caucasian brand than scandinavian based our legacy right like no one else wears that kitschy patchworky geography teacher shit than white people and here you are complaining about them god almighty man god almighty uh let's continue but it remains a nimble business with a different approach to commercial risk than the more established brands that have turned streetwear into a multi-billion dollar industry and which often strategically utilize black expression as the accent of course ah! <sighs> being a key part of this generational change in streetwear has put mr emery in the crosshairs of almost every turn nah he's been the crosshairs because he just talks some absolute waffle at times it's annoying bro he's way smarter than this i'd hope he is anyway it's like come on man you're just waffling out here waffling miss emery the crosses them almost every turn as a symbol of both transformation and representation as supreme he found an insufficiently diverse staff who treat this course of <laughs> Can you imagine working at Supreme all these years, right? Having a blast, being at this place. Dream job for some people. And then Tremaine Emery comes, works on his first day, and he's like, yeah, so about George Floyd. So, like, bro, I'm just trying to eat my fucking burrito while I fucking quickly d sort out this fucking, you know, this deck. While I quickly sort out this tech pack. Like, come on, man. Like, forget scaring all the hoes. You're scaring all the designers away. Like, wild go on, Relax. They didn't want to, um, what do you call it? Um, as Supreme, he found an insufficiently diverse staff who treated discourse about race like pushing food around the plate. They didn't want to eat the vegetables. So what, we're vegetables now? What? What are we, okra? Cool. The Jaffa images he'd wanted to put on Supreme clothes and skateboards, which included depictions of lynching and the <laughs> lash marks on the back of a former slave caused discomfort internally and externally. You don't say. You don't say, bro. You don't say. Shock horror. Supreme didn't want depictions of lynching and lash marks on the back of former slaves on their fucking crisp white t-shirts that they're going to sell to fucking kids that have fucking trust funds and are more white than fucking Justin Bieber. Are you fucking sure? I am shocked. I am shocked. I'm shocked. I really am shocked. Anyway, and while leaving Supreme freed Mr. Emery to devote all his work time to Denim Tears, his current food culture, sorry, uh, his current collection, which had originally been from Black Southern Food, he has been met with some online resistance. Cool. There's him with a great Virgil. RIP to the fucking great. Let's continue. All the while, he's been recovering from an October 2022 erotic aneurysm that landed him in hospital for two and a half months. Okay, cool. We know about that. Um, it was being attacked on social media by Ye, attacked by so honestly, man, this guy. Imagine, imagine, imagine being so happy that you're a victim, like boldly proclaiming that you're a victim, and what that Ye bullied you or something. Like, come on, man, come on, come on. For Derek to publicly denounce his White Lives Matter era antics, for Mr. Emery, whose natural disposition tends to be uh, ruminative and patient, and who from much of 2010s played creative consorts for Western Frank Ocean, among others, while coming into his own clothing designer following the path laid out by his close friend Virgil Abloh, the tension has been dizzying and disorientating, though not disestablishing. Um, de establishing. You know what's really odd about this Yay thing? A lot of people have said this whole Kanye loving Trump loving hitler um hating jews hasn't been new people that have been near and close to him have been saying from i forgot what album was it i think they might have said jesus from jesus era and i think that was around the time that um tremaine was working with him he's been saying these things behind the scenes we already saw flirtations of it yeah it was always already gonna crack and go over that side when he started wearing confederate flags on his jackets and shit right he was kind of testing the waters but allegedly he'd been saying 
Hitler shit from time. I think the rumor was that he wanted to call Jesus Hitler. I think at the, at the time or something on those kind of lines, right? So I find it funny that you know you're trying to like proclaim that you were some sort of like what do you call it freedom fighter or you should be heralded as some sort of brave person because you denounced Yay saying white lives matter when most likely he was getting up to all sorts of manners behind the scenes that you never called out back then because it was advantageous to be part of his crew to get the free Yeezys to be going to all the listening parties to be walking around with him going to the studio everyone liked to be clouded up but the moment he went too far it started to hurt their money they're all kind of backed away but from what I've read again who knows if it's true he's been building up to this moment he'd been uttering certain things that would lead you to believe that you know he's gonna go off in the deep end and now these guys are trying to act as if like you know there's some freedom fighters because they they said the thing at the end when it was up when it was easy to say but in the midst of you having a fun time and getting fat invoices paid and shit and free shoes no one said anything everyone was posting their box of shoes thank you team yeezy thank you yay and now all of a sudden you don't want to be his friend anymore all right cool let's continue the purgatory because you can't do what you want to do as a black man in America. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so full of shit. It's purgatory because you can't do what you want to do. As a what are you doing then? You've made millions from selling hoodies and t-shirts. Isn't that the opposite of what you're saying? You haven't created, you haven't invented something. You haven't you know, uh, spearheaded a new service that you've done nothing substantial to really help humanity, but somehow you've become a millionaire from screen printing on sweats and tees. That is the antithesis of being able to do exactly what you want as a black man in America, despite the hurdles. That should show you that anything is actually possible if you put your mind to it. Yes, there's race issues in, in America. We all know it. Even around the world, we've all got our fucking issues. But if you can make it, especially, again, not to be mean, not to be mean, not to be mean, but if you can make it looking like Tremaine, anybody can make it. The fact that he made it without any real education, any real schooling, any real training, and just learning on the job and being the right people and blah, 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 is proof that you can do it despite the hurdles, despite the blocks put in front of you. But now, somehow, this guy that makes millions off of stuff like this is crying about you can't do things. What, what's, the, what's the sentence? What's the, what's the fucking sentence? Where is it? Uh, it's purgatory. Because you can't do what you want to do as a black man in America. Okay. You couldn't do what you wanted to do as Supreme. You left or got fired. Then you went back to your own brand, which some people, again, I wouldn't say this because I think Supreme is the greatest streetwear brand of all time. But I think there's some people out there who are big Denim Tears fans. They might as go as far as saying Supreme is, Denim Tears is better than Supreme. So you left a brand that some people rate as the best brand in the world. You then went back to your own brand that loads of people fucking love and adore. Then you did exactly what you wanted to do, but here you are complaining that black men can't do what they want to do when you just did it. Make that make sense. He said in early March of his tugs of war about who can steer black storytelling in fashion and to where. You're working with the confines of what white culture at large wants you to do. Also, what black culture at large, especially to... I'd love to hear from fucking Tremaine's wife. It must be so weird to be in a relationship with somebody who hates your race, but loves you. How does that work then? He's complaining about the white man, but your daddy's white, your mama's white. You know, you came up in a whatever right hierarchy blah, blah, whatever right like how does that work then you're always complaining about these things but then you're gonna probably have kids that are gonna have mixed heritage like how, how does this work how does this work is it helping you is it hindering you choose a fight choose a villain choose a struggle you can't have all of them i don't think anyway let's continue rather than shy away from the hard questions though mr emery is leaning in he was speaking at the Steel Spartan Denim Tears office in West Broadway, Manhattan, around the corner from his first permanent retail space, African Diaspora Goods. Man's got his own studio. Man's got his own fucking store. Maybe a couple of houses. 
probably a nice whip, covered himself healthcare when he had that crazy aneurysm. Thank God he got well. And he's saying it's impossible for a black man to do what he wants. And he came from being what? The cool guy on the scene. No real training. Was never really seen as a, as a designer. All of a sudden, boom, he's blown up and become one of the most important brands existing nowadays in the streetwear kind of menswear space. But allegedly, you can't do what you want to do as a black man. All right, cool, bro. And his brand is predominantly shit about the black experience. God almighty, sometimes I, I don't know. My brain hurts sometimes. Which sells his brand alongside a collection of 2,000 African art history books, which will eventually function as a kind of non-lending research library. Denim Tears is currently the best known for its cotton reef motif that Mr. Emery began applying to vintage Levi's jeans in 2020. Originally as a limited release that felt more like an artistic than Satori intervention, subsequently much more widely on the jeans and caps and sweatshirts. The goal was um, dis discurvis, sorry. The, the goal was discurvis to highlight the product of slave labor and make it a manifest on the product itself. In the last year especially, the reef has become one of the most recognizable, ubiquitous, now widely bootleg logos in streetwear. You know what's funny about that fucking logo? You know what's hilarious about that fucking logo? <laughs> You're now seeing loads of people wearing it who have no idea what it represents. No idea the significance of it. No idea the weight of it. No idea the brevity of it. No idea the impact of it. It's wearing it because it's a cool thing. And on top of it, it makes it hilarious. I saw a video of this kid who's, a, I guess, a, a fan of Israel, right? Some would refer to as a Zionist, screaming epithets and slurs at, at pro-Palestinian protesters wearing a Denim Tears hoodie, which it, to me is like, you know, quintessential the times we're living in at the moment. This guy has this brand where he's trying to, you know, platform it as a voice for the voiceless and a chance to share the black experience and essentially using trauma as a fucking you know, as a theme for his designs and trying to speak for the people that have been downtrodden and oppressed. And then you've got a person who is one of the oppressors, figuratively speaking, wearing the hoodie, screaming at somebody that he probably should be aligning themselves with. It's just, I don't know. You can't make this shit up. You can't make it up. It's fucking incredible. Anyway, he says, that means that this course spreads, Mr. Emery. Part of Mr. Emery's influence and power comes from now how he brings these references points into into quote as i say quotidian quotidian um easy to wear garments like jeans hoodies and t-shirts it's beautifully utilitarian approach said the fashion designer andre walker a close friend of Virg uh, of miss emery cool big up andre walker absolute legend the title of the current dm tears collection is kiss my grits what his mother and many others in the south used to say as a proxy to kick my black ass Black food references thread the collection together across a desperate design frameworks. The clothes include ab abstraction, a silk velour shirt, and pants and colors of the spices used to make fried chicken and pop. <laughs> Yo, this nigga selling fried chicken shirts. I fucking love this guy, man. Anyway, colors of spices used to make fried chicken, pop out watermelon green rind on the outside and red and seed um, filled meat on the inside made with Comme des Garçons, the best thing he's ever done, and a baroque painting, a hoodie with the still life of various fruits. There are shirts done in picnic cable top cloth patterns and necklaces made of chicken bones and sealed in resin. I'm surprised he didn't do a flip of the Burberry print. You know the babe, you know the babe, you know the Burberry print uh, baby daddy shirt that all black people wear? I'm surprised he didn't do that as another thing. Like, you know, if, if, you, if you're going to go down that you know, black iconography. Just make a shirt with fucking with a with a milk crate challenge on it. You know what I mean? Do that, or a shirt with fucking braids on the front. You know, we were kangs. Fucking hell. Anyway, low low hanging fruit, reductive, and just lame. But again, what do I know? Um, Mr. Emery want use of the imagery walks a beautiful tightrope and subtly of the ob obviousness as Mr. Walker. These signifiers are drawn directly from Mr. Emery's upbringing, spending summers in rural Harlem, Georgia, the breakfast table at the mother's hot. Okay, we care about that. Um, that's who I came from, he said. You know what I mean? So I don't feel shame about no watermelon. <laughs> watermelon. <laughs> Oh, I fucking love him. Um, it's part of my watermelon. It's part of my culture. Ah, uh, the black black culture is fried chicken and watermelons. Oh my god, 
Bro, I swear to God, if somebody said my culture is fucking okra and black, I, I'm I'm angry. I'm fighting you. Don't fucking reduce me to foods, you piece of shit. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> the same type of white folk that burnt down Tulsa. <laughs> <They turned into laughs> oh, oh, oh! I want to be there when Tremaine does. And his wife does a fucking 23 and me and realizes that her parents were maybe owned a fucking plantation or something. That would be fucking hilarious. Imagine if that happened. His wife found out that her family were like former slave owners or they were responsible for burning down Tulsa and shit. Oh, God. Imagine the heartbreak. Imagine. Um, and I'm not going for that, he says. There you go. We've got some images there of a watermelon um, sweatshirt and a tablecloth jean jacket. We've also got the chicken bone necklaces. And again, T-shirt. The chicken bones are made into a necklace. They reference bone throwing um, deviation rituals and also refer to how young Mr. Abler would watch his father crack bones and suck out the marrow. It's also a not of Vivian Westwood and Leonard Rock Boutique, which sold clothes with chicken bones. So, um, it looks a bit jujuist to me. I'm not going to lie. I'm sure it's got a lot of references, you know, that they've kind of pulled out of their asses retrospectively. But it just looks a bit too much juju look to me, isn't it? I'm not into that. I'm not into the juju. I'm not into the voodoo. So for me, it's I'm out on that one, to be completely honest. Not for me. Um, for Mr. Emery, though, the clothes are part of a long pattern of embedding personal narratives into his design. The dusty red on the Asics collaboration he released in 2021 referred to the clay of Mr. Emery's family funeral plot in Georgia. One of his earliest t-shirts was sold at pop-ups in New York, probably featured a photo of his mother who died in 2015. Um, at this time, sorry, this time around, however, some of his online chatter from the black critics has been unsparing. Part of why it's polarizing is because people don't see me as an artist. Oh, God almighty, bro. We just don't get him, man. This is probably his experience from Ye. He's doing that defense of like, you just don't understand. No, we understand. We just think it's shit. Bruh. Part of, the, part of why it's polarizing is because people don't see me as an artist. All right, bro. Mr. Emery said he sees his collection, his clothing, so as a tradition that includes David Hammond's he, uh, again, another person he doesn't shut up the fuck up about. Um, David Hammonds wouldn't do something as lame as shit, as lame as this. I don't think so. 1970s artworks that use spades, Kate Carver Walker's um, A Subtlety, and a Sphinx X installation of the Domino um, Sugar Factory in 2014, and Spike Lee's film Bamboozled. Great reference. It's a shame that all these references just result in this shit, innit, right? All those amazing references just result in a, sh in a hoodie like that. Huh. Um, if people think I'm I'm on some step, what's that? Stephen Fitix Black Sambo, you're really not paying attention. Step in, fetching Black Sambo, you're not paying attention. We just don't get it, right? We just don't. Okay, cool. I'm making a porn a king. What? All right. Mr. Emery refers to these online critics as the loud minority. <laughs> I think they're the majority. Let's go to his actual Instagram. Let's see his fucking Instagram. I think they're the majority, brother. I'm not going to lie. I think these people are the fucking majority. Myself included. Let's see what, let's see what the, let's see what the actual people them are saying about some of this shit this guy's trying to peddle. Let's see. Because he put the article up on his page. Let's see what they're actually saying in the comments. Big up Tremaine anyway for not deleting the comments. He does let people talk and converse and debate so let's see oh look at this is actually this is hilarious too tremaine has this is this is what i love about this guy right he's so sometimes as much as i love the guy he's so full of shit so tremaine's up here you know the voice of the voiceless doesn't stop talking about social issues very politically charged always talking about you know um always speaking truth to power always speaking against abuse but here he is in this current post I got on the screen, promoting something he's doing with Tom Sachs. Now, again, I love Tom Sachs. I love the Mars Yards. I love the studio. I love everything that he does. I still think he got cancelled unjustifiably. I don't think it's a crime to be a cunt. But if you're this, everybody's a victim, speaking up for the voiceless type of person. If you're on this believable women type of shit, it's a bit weird for you to then be okay with somebody that was accused of abusing his staff and doing like weird sexually inappropriate shit, turning up to meetings in his underwear and all that sort of malarkey, calling people's names, throwing, you know, moleskins at their heads and shit. Don't you find that a bit odd? 
to be the person that's like against you know structural abuse and powers and systems and shit but then you're also championing a guy who was alleged to be abusing the power and influence that he had on his employees don't you find that utterly hypocritical i do maybe i'm in the minority but again what do i know let's go back to the fucking comments oh 219 comments let's see let's see what people say here um let's see what people, let's see um two comments already like here let's see what what dash people are saying is the rubik's cube gonna release with multi product trying to copy it to a whisk kid son <laughs> Of course, there's a white man wanting to cop that fucking racism, a fucking, um, yeah, Rubik's Cube. You've got to love that. What we were saying here, uh, I mean, I can't even let the Supreme, I mean, can't even let the Supreme thing go. Excited for this. Another one says, LMO, survive the internet. Survive Kanye, grow a pair. There are people living in literal war zones and hell. Exactly. Thank you. Finally, somebody has said the thing that I've been trying to say in a very long-winded way. There are people lit literally living in war zones. And here's this guy crying about Kanye making a shitty brand called Tremendous that he was going to put out there um, that obviously didn't see the light of day, luckily, because it was fucking terrible. And here he is comparing it to the struggle of them people. Obviously, that girl Gabrielle is also involved. She might be the reason why everything started like that, you know? She was the person that first criticized Kanye's um, White Lives Matter shirt, right? So big up her. Um, or who else? Let's see what else people are saying here unstoppable survived kanye supreme and a near-death experience what next you survived diddy too <laughs> big up this person you can survive it all yes sir survived kanye question mark survived diddy too let's see what other comment people are saying here so it's not the again it's not the minority i think it's 50 50 mate i'm not gonna lie tell me you can't handle insta comments who telling me good job this angle getting old now just cop the red oe you got this forever in your corner. Of course, another white person. Um, done copying Supreme yet, this person says. Man, what we doing, Tremaine? Can't wait till I run into you. Fuck the money. I want to do it. Okay, this person's sucking dick. Oh, that's so dub. Bro, we don't want... Imagine, oh, imagine that if you really want to be pro-black, that's what you need to do. You need to do a Desto dub, awful old cough syrup, denim tears collaboration. Chicken and waffles with a bit of lean on the side that's the real black experience that's a real black expression <laughs> um it's not about the controversy please make about design again yeah the survive the kanye part is not it your gas your glitching i don't know what that is what's glitching um your you are one of my biggest inspiration but stop being a victim be the pan-Africanist that you are claiming to be and act like a man. Stop gentrifying at stop gentrif stop your gentrification aesthetic. Shit, we a new world right now. Exactly. Exactly, bro. Tell the guy to grow a pair. Get over it, bro. We all had fucking we all probably got a dream. All of us have had experiences where we got a job that we dreamed of and it hasn't been what we dreamed of. You know, it happens sometimes. It can be annoying, it can be frustrating. But let it go, bro. Let it go. Surviving Kanye is such a reach. Oh my God, these clicks merchants are so lame. S SEO wanksers. The real you. Yes, you can. Um, they wasn't there. Big love T. Of course, Tremaine Emery can. God bless Tremaine. Tremaine can. He can Emery. We get through anything. Sigh. Grown men here getting emotional. Dude, you're a fantastic creative. Let your work speak. Did y'all even read the article? Because this headline is misleading. No, it's not really. Um, I love people say that. Oh, it took me out of context. Nah, the article is all the context we need. You know, and also you don't get to like, what do you want me to do? More research to find out exactly what you mean. You don't like, you do, <laughs> as if you're owed that. What you say, what we see is what we see. Like, so it is what it is. Um, Survive Kanye can't be one of the things mentioned. He's a victim because he's black. Great statements and work is so strong. Okay, cool. So 50-50, I think. Let's continue. Um, Mr. Emery refers to his online criticism as loud minority. If it was a loud majority, I wouldn't be sitting here. Oh, that's, But that's a problem, though. He's not understanding. The majority of people like what he does, clearly. But, you know, which is our, it's debatable because I think, you know, we all try to look for our 1,000 true fans. And I think 1,000 true fans will probably be able to sustain you and, you know, keep the lights on in your house and whatnot and let you pay the bills because they're your true fans and they'll 
pay and buy anything that you do. Cool. But most people have an issue when he talks about all this shit because he's usually talking out of his ass. Let's see what he says about here. Um, if it was Lama majority, I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't be able to pay my staff. I wouldn't be able to open a store. I wouldn't be able to pay my expenses and her, uh, my expensive vast health insurance. But that's the thing, though. You're doing really well, but then you're complaining about structural racism. It's like you're the you're the obvious example that the structural racism you speak about isn't as bad as you make it to seem as because you made it despite maybe not being as talented as others, but by using your connections, your grit, your determination, all this sort of shit to get to where you want to get to. That is proof that you can make it in spite of what you are faced with obstacle wise but this guy doesn't want to admit that for some reason because also it's more beneficial to be a victim because his whole fucking platform his whole brand is built on being a fucking victim basically victimhood sells isn't it victim book victimhood is um very profitable for this guy um he's also been attacked for marrying a white woman let's see what he says about this interesting i've been made fun of for dating black girl oh here we go <laughs> this guy <laughs> I've been made fun of for dating a black girl with natural hair and I've lived enough to make me fun of for marrying a white woman. I've seen both sides. He noted with a rare flash of exasperation. James Baldwin dated white men and he's the most prolific, most... Re oh, no, 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 no. Don't get other people involved. Personally for me, I could give one shit who you sleep with. I could give one shit who you marry. I could give one shit who you have kids with. I could give one shit who you spend your whole life with. But if you're going to sit there and grift and use racial issues and racism and all this malarkey as a fucking, as a, as a Trojan horse for your, you know, for your capitalism, and then you're going to turn around and pretend like you marrying a white person isn't weird or funny, that's when I have a problem with you. I don't care what you do. But you're out here rabbing on about racism, 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 Supreme is racist. But then allegedly you met this woman at Supreme. So this racist company that gave you hell, that ruined your life, that, you know, maybe in some walks, maybe in some people's eyes might have been the cause of the health issues you had or that stress you were going through. Why would you then be happy to take somebody from that environment and make them your life partner? Wouldn't you want to complete this yourself from it? You'd be like, you know what? I don't want anything to do with this. But now, she was good enough. So what? Was she the only white person that was good? So there's only one white person that you like in the world that was okay? That one lady? Or are you just full of shit? Which one is it? Come on, bro. And again, like, I've got shit. Like, who, who made fun? Like, again, who made fun of you at dating a girl with natural hair? That's fucking a lie, man. A lie, a lie, a lie, a lie. But especially in streetwear, where most of the guys in streetwear fucking love Asian women. Especially back in the day when I was coming up, like everybody wanted to fucking be with some Japanese girl or something because I thought they thought like they they dressed well. I don't know, it's fucking insane. But regardless, oh this guy, man, sometimes. <sighs> Andy Emery McConnell. <laughs> of course she double barreled the name. Of course, of course, of course. Anyway, <laughs> Andy Emery McConnell, who Emery, <laughs> who Emery married in October, has watched him navigate the, crit the critiques up close. It's, it's his soul coming out into the form of the pieces that he chose to put out. Oh, she's full of shit too. What? It's his soul coming out into the form of the pieces that he chooses to put out into the public. And when someone comes for your soul, how can you? Oh, shut up! Oh, with all due respect, man, what are you talking about, bro? This is soul. This is soul work. He's having to tap into his fucking deep soul for this shit. Is that what we're saying? Come on, man. Everyone give their head a wobble. Everyone relax. Everyone take a deep breath. Please. God damn it. The road to recovery. Much of the conversation about Mr. Emery and his work mirrors the discourse about Mr. Ablo. Let's not compare Tremaine to Virgil, please. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Altern um, alternately dragged um, and praised sometimes by the same people. Let's not do this. <sighs> in the final years before his death in 2021, Miss Abla was the most visible black designer in men's fashion. His success... Op but have you noticed that Virgil never did all this shit? Even though Virgil did get a lot of stick, mostly based on what he looked like and his background and who he was friends with, 
Don't you did? Don't you realize, or did, can you not remember that he didn't once try and use it as an excuse? He recognized it. He may have spoke about it, but he didn't lean into being a victim. He just kept on keeping on, despite all the naysayers, despite all the people, and and even in Virgil's case, everybody that kind of criticized him were the ones that were first running to kind of give their condolences and well wishes and regards when he passed. Right, the ones that were kind of the ones that were the most vocal critics were the ones that had so much to say when he ended up passing. Like, get fucked. Miss Abel was the most visible. Blah, blah, blah. Um, his success opened doors for many young generation, but the persistent and often uh personality meta narrative about his work was draining that emery is experiencing similar pushback during a period of time where he's still navigating his uh, medical recovery much as <laughs> ablo to see <laughs> ah, this guy has sympathy for me because i'm sick sympathy for me because i'm black sympathy for me, has sympathy for me because i married white sympathy for me because supreme fired me yo this guy's a professional victim this is like he's like amanda seals Tremaine is basically male Amanda Seals. He loves being a fucking victim and he doesn't know why everyone hates him or not even hates him, doesn't like the things that he says or push it back. Like, it's like, bruh. He was hospitalized for the erotic this, this section eight months into his time at Supreme, a near death experience that led to two induced comas and a fasciotomy on his left leg, pneumonia, blood um, sepsis, kidney failure, and dialysis. If this happened to me at a job, I'm shutting up about it. I think there's just too much juju, too much bad vibe. I'm just not going to talk about it anymore. If this happened to me at a job, I'm shutting up about it. If this brought me this much strife, this much pain, this much anguish, all in the span of just a few weeks. Mitch, I've visited the hospital. I said it's not your time. You're supposed to be here. We are not supposed to lose you the way we lost Virgil. We got more than we got more than that you're supposed to do. We got more that you're supposed to do. Um, when Mr. Emery got home from the hospital, he couldn't sleep with covers on because the nerves of his legs were too sensitive. He left hospital with a wheelchair, eventually graduated to a walker, and now walks slowly and deliberately, aided by a hiking stick. Ugh, Jesus Christ, us, bro. M my guy can barely walk and he's still crying about Supreme. Like, surely your energy should be on different things, but what do I know? For shoes, he wears only hawkers. Apart from the rare night out, three times a week in the sleek, minimalist boot filled Tribeca loft, Mr. McConnell and him, Mr. McConnell, share. His physical therapist arrives for a private session. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to expect a collaboration with him and Hawker soon, right? I'm assuming this is why they mentioned it. I'm assuming there's some sort of Hawker collaboration happening um, with Denim Tears. That's like, that'll be funny, isn't it, right? Um, <laughs> Anti racism walking shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell anti-racism creepers bro like fuck me bro oh um not all the hurt is physical though mr abla's passing um left the talent vacuum because certain people certain other people aren't here miss emery said the target is on my back disgusting using virgil's passing as an excuse for why you're getting pushback and abuse online is insane when it's pretty clear why you're getting it and it isn't even that deep <laughs> you know most people like what you do you said it already that's why you got a successful brand that's why you're multi-million that's why you got staff that's why you got a store but sometimes some of this shit you say is bullshit people try and call you out for it and now you're saying you're only getting this because virgil passed and you're the only like what Mr. Emery's close relationship with Mr. Ablo informed his development as a clothing designer. V is the first person in my adult life who was like, you're an artist. When Mr. Ablo, when Mr. Emery first showed him the images of his reefs, he said, this is beautiful. Six months, you're going to have a Maybach. Which is true. Um, so big up Virgil for seeing the vision. Um, <sighs> Mr. Emery laughed a little bit, so I'm making good. I didn't buy the Maybach. I did this store. The store opened last month in the old Union space in Spring Street. Again, good heritage. Look again, the Supreme connection there. The old Union space happened to be the old Supreme store. If you know, you know. Well, it, it, that was a place where James Jebbia first kind of got started doing his thing. So that legacy is there deep. 
Imagine, and yeah, anyway, whatever. I'm not going to get into all that stuff. One of the foundational addresses in New York streetwear history, in a rich coincidence, Mr. Jebby was a fan of Union. Exactly. The space was wholly redesigned by the artist Fiesta, uh, Fiesta Gates and updated on the design he'd first displayed in 2019 exhibition called Region Projects. And Mr. Abloh preparation for the collaboration with Mr. Abloh and the possible store. There you got the store there with the shit in there. Cool. Um, on the right wall made a torch plywood over steel frame. Our denim tears close hanging from the face out lengths of the pipe. On the left wall, the African art collection with Miss Emery bought for 150 from the Alka bookstore. A site of black possibility for us to get to call the store. We didn't have the burden of the whole space being a retail store. It was like, what if people came in and they were a little bit confused about what was happening here? That's pretty cool. So it's half store, half gallery, half information center half rad radicalization zone right cool we love it productive confusion is mr emery's me meter um both his falling out with supreme and the recent denim tears blow back turn into part on how the black experience could should be captured on clothing especially clothing that may be brought up and worn and displayed on the world by people who haven't lived that experience or as one tiktoker put it can white people wear denim tears for the record mr emery's answer is yes if i see a little white kid wearing it i'm like fire I wonder what the conversation is up in his crib. There is no conversation. People don't give a fuck about the meaning of the clothes. They just wear it because it's cool. Anyway, maybe the conversation is beautiful and the dad's like, where do you get the shirt? Can we look it up? Or perhaps it goes another equally revealing way. Maybe the kid gets into an argument and realizes that even though he loves his dad, his dad's a racist. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's insane. This guy is insane, bro. Tremaine's insane. <laughs> Who the fuck is he speaking? <laughs> He's tattooed. <laughs> I don't think it goes that way. Anyway, I don't know. What do I know? And maybe the kid's like, I never want to be like this part of him. And maybe that happened because of that conversation about a t-shirt. Yo, the man, this guy thinks a lot of himself, isn't it? I, you gotta have this kind of confidence, but this is insane. To think your conversations are driving racial or spearheading racial conversations around the dinner table is fucking hilarious. Number one, even thinking that that kid is that speaks to him anyway, or vice versa, is fucking hilarious. Oh, I love it. There were some Mr. Emery's crucial questions. Um, is there a distinction between a gallery and a t-shirt? This is the question this nigga is ruminating over. Is there a distinction between a gallery and a t-shirt? How vast is the chasm between style and art? Are some images too unsettling to put on clothes? Should images that are, are so unsettling be looked at even... Okay, cool, man. Oh, cool, cool, whatever. Um, a desire for discourse about the past and present. I think the reality is Tremaine Dry craves discourse, said Anthony Spector, Mr. Emery's close friend of more than a decade and business partner in tears. Tremaine's exit from Supreme, a lot of that revolved around the fact that there was no discourse. It wasn't... Yeah, but you're, you're at a job, bro. Shut the fuck up and stop talking. Do the fucking job. It's basically an office... It was never going to work anyway because he's basically an entrepreneur going back and working an office job. That's going to be hard. Doing a nine to five while also running your own brand is going to be difficult or running a business. That's why it didn't work out. But discourse, like, why is everything about fucking talking and the feelings? I like, just do the fucking job or not. Trey's Expo Supreme had a lot revolved around the fact that there was no discourse. It wasn't about someone attacking his idea. Well, he, he said it was about that, didn't he? The most successful part of him, the most stressful part for him, the part that made him realize he couldn't do the job was that he wasn't able to talk about it. Oh, all right, cool, whatever you say. Mr. Emery received a supreme offer the week uh, of Mr. Abloh's death and began the job in February 2022. Mr. Abloh, he said, had warned him not to take it. He said, what would it take for you to culturally move that brand? Do you really want to extend that energy? And boy, will my brother write again. You see, you didn't listen. You wanted the clout, you wanted the money, you wanted the notoriety, the prestige of the job. You got in, realized it's just a regular office job. You realized it wasn't as nice as you thought it would be. And then you started to cry racism. When it wasn't really racism, it just wasn't a good fit. It happens. Get over it. Fuck. Mr. Emery had long been in a social orbit of Supreme, a now big company acquired by VF Corporation 2020 for more than $2 billion that still functions like a private party. His tenure there lasted only 13 months, not counting the five and a half months he was on medical leave. 
Oof. That probably put a strain on it as well, didn't it, right? Being on medical leave for five and a half months. It shouldn't, but you know how companies are. You know how companies are. Uh, continuing, despite having hired Mr. Emery as creative director, the first time the insular company had hired someone with that title, Mr. Jebby had remained a hoovering, um, a hovering presence. Um, what do you call it? Mr. Emery said not long before Mr. Emery's supplication, he and Mr. Jebby had a face-off in a meeting over control. <laughs> Honestly, but this guy just started, like, he's got, he's got the mindset of a Gen Z, isn't it? He's just started going into fashion and he's already here complaining about this sort of stuff. It's like, come on, man enough um i had to really put my foot down with james <laughs> we mr emery record i said are we are, are we musha and raf because i wasn't hired under that pretext i was hired as your step as you were stepping back musha and prada hired us <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> imagine james james face seeing this guy who just got started Telling him like I had to do his job, I had to run his company. Who's Musha? Who's Raf? Am I Raf or are you Musha? Oh, this guy's a fucking legend. Um, Free representative Supreme declined to comment. Of course, man. Let's not allow this. In creative meetings, Mr. Emery would sometimes be told a project he suggested would be done at the tears was admirable, but wouldn't work as Supreme. True. But Supreme was has deployed the the patina of black radicalization previously, whether images of Martin Luther King or black hand extending a middle finger on a t-shirt, or the collaboration with hip hop duo Dead Presidents. Um, it has featured up teen rappers on shirts and played the imagery far less radical, like the presidential headshot of Barack Obama. It has also showcased provocative art like Andre Seriano's Piss Christ. But that's the thing that makes him look way worse. This could have been a great job. Not only just to do what you do at Dead in Tears, but to do like a different version of it. Not just take literal ideas. Maybe try and, what you call it? Maybe try and dumb down. Maybe try and water down the racially highly charged stuff that you would do at Dead in Tears and get away with. And try and apply that to Supreme. Because that's actually an interesting design challenge. Hey, how can I get these really intense things to come across to normie generic public people? That's actually an interesting design challenge. I'd love to approach that some way. Do you know what I mean? That's actually a cooler way to actually test your design chops, your artistic merit, your ideas, how creatively you think, how broadly you think. That's actually a great, you know, because you can, anyone could do whatever they want on their, own, on their own label. But when you have some constraints, budget, you know, whatever, structural, whatever it may be, you have notes, that's when you really kind of test whether or not you can actually present them in a good way and kind of get approved for people who probably don't want to approve shit. But anyway, what do I know? But Mr. Emery found these engagements to be surface level. If the staff was unable to truly talk about the complexities of the black life and the culture, then why are we touching it at all? Mr. Emery realized he hadn't been brought in to change an agent. He recorded a meeting about whether to release a shirt featuring the controversial young rap artist called Young, young Boy Never Broke Again, in which concerns about his criminal history were being weighed against his popularity on streaming services among young people. The project was approved. Mr. Emery recalls Mr. Jaffa saying, does James listen to NBA Young Boy? <laughs> Mr. Emery continued, he wasn't trolling James. What he was saying is, if you listen to it, the lyrics are dark. The darkness isn't far removed from how dark my work is. That's what AJ was saying. Like, do they not see, if you could do NBA Young Boy, you can do me. That's not the Oh my God. Having a picture of NBA Young Boy in a t-shirt isn't the same thing as having an image of a sleigh being whipped on the back. I'm sorry, it just isn't. It's just not isn't. It just isn't. Mr. Jappa has been... One of Emery's first calls when he arrived at Supreme, when Mr. Emery was still working at, for Mr. West, he'd brokered a meeting with Mr. Jaffa, who used Mr. West's music in a breakout 2016 music, Love is a Message, The Message is My Death. For Supreme, they plan to collaborate on items using more than Mr. Jaffa's rawest imagery, including La Rage, featuring a Hulk S character depicted in hyperbolized um, cartoon art in underscore black frustration the ex-slave gordon an image of the free black man showing the scars of whippings he suffered while in bondage people always think you're a black artist that your stuff is supposed to be in some ways relatable or palatable i call it after school special i do what i want to do i'm not interested in white folks telling me what to do but neither am i interested in black people telling me what to do but that's the thing though would arthur jeffer have taken a job at supreme obviously not he would have known Wild Guan and not even taken a job. He'd prefer to do his own thing. So 
it's like they're both coming from different points and you know it's just funny that this is the guy that he kind of runs to when you know he will probably know that supreme would have never approved this anyway but hey what can i do so here's the some of the images again this works very well with fucking denim tears would these images have worked well with supreme i don't think so we move the clothing went through usual channels for collaborations samples are produced and then silence after a junior level black employee complained to mr jebby about the imagery saying it belonged in the museum not a skate shop the collaboration was effectively shelved no one spoke to miss emery about the collaboration's fate this is what he doesn't speak about even though he says supreme was a systemically black corporation that held him down it was a black person a junior that basically got the collaboration shelved why don't we speak about that why don't we speak about the black people that don't like the stuff that you do as opposed to it just being like a race a white thing like come on bro during a meeting discussing the work of the black artist lauren halsey mr emery said he didn't want to discuss working with black artists until getting clarity about the jaffa collaboration soon after he received a call from human resources he said saying they received a complaint that the meeting had been emotional and racially charged <laughs> The guy's getting written up. Only 13 months in the job, he's getting written up already. God almighty. After his resignation, Mr. Emery said and Mr. Jebbia had a frank, vulnerable four-hour conversation at Mr. Emery's home. Mr. Emery said that Mr. Jebbia said that the reason he never talked about him, the Jaffa collaboration, was because he knew he'll, he would change his mind. At one point, Mr. Emery said Mr. Jebbia had tears in his eyes. <laughs> this sounds like when Brendan said, um, what's his name? Casey Affleck came up to him with tears in his eyes. It's time to quit fighting. All right. I always suspect him because he did things wrong, in my opinion. But he looked me in my eyes and talked to me like a grown man. He apologized to my face and he's the only person in the company that did that. Okay. So why are you still talking about it then? Come on, bro. He's the most important person in the company. Why are you still crying about this? Then? If, the, if the guy that founded it, that's still leading it, came to your house and spoke to you face to face like a man about the whole shit outside of everything that happened why are you still crying but after the business of fashion publishing account of mr emery's exit framed in a way he found disingenuous i texted james just a picture of the white fragility book i said i hope one day you read this book imagine texting oh my god bro this guy is a fucking idiot white fragility book written by a white woman about racism text it to okay cool um i hope one day you read this book so you can really understand where i'm coming from i don't know if if me and you will ever speak again but regardless if we do i hope you read this book mr connell who'd worked with supreme as well quit after the article's release oh so she quit so she doesn't work there anymore okay i thought she still worked at supreme cool fair play okay that i respect fair play to her for quitting stand by your man um in that same conversation, Mr. Emery said Mr. Jebbia expressed hope that Emery would reconsider returning to the position, but Mr. Emery would declined. People in people interface, so they wanted so after everything that happened, they still wanted him to come back. And he's still crying about structural racism. After everything that occurred, errors and missteps and mistakes on both sides, they still wanted him to come back and he's still crying. People in interfacing with Tremaine treat him with love and excitement and exuberance says Mr. says miss mcconnell and i think that maybe he's learned which could also probably be a little bit heartbreaking that sometimes there's things under that he needs to pay attention to no he needs to learn that working in corporations this is what happens when you have to work with other people that aren't just your own team you're gonna butt heads with people because they just they have different priorities than you they see the world differently than you do doesn't mean they're fucking bad people it just means to see the world differently. It's perfectly okay. Miss Emery concurred. You're hiring a guy that does Black Jesus with a cotton reef on his head as creative director. I felt like you're a real one. And that you have to go down like this. It makes you feel like I was wrong. No. They hired you because of that. But what if you expected to do a Black Jesus with a cotton reef on the head at Supreme, you're an idiot. Surely your ideas are more than this. They're like, hey, you're doing interesting things there. Maybe you could take some of that DNA, some of that fucking juice and apply it to what we're doing. But it doesn't mean like for like. Come on, bro. That's easy to fucking understand. Ask whether he'd consider taking a creative director role, another white-owned company. Miss Emery wrestled with the question with both micro and macro form. He should just say no outright, right? But of course, money, innit? Let's see his answer. If people didn't value Virgil being at Louis more than off-white, maybe he wouldn't have taken the job. 
Huh? Oh, my head is hurting. My head is fucking hurting. My head is literally hurting now. So he's trying to say in a roundabout way that people only valued Virgil's contribution to fashion because he took the the job at... Oh. Okay. 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 Hubris is a hell of a drug. I can be honest and say I work steadfastly on my own validation index and focus on only finding validation from seeing a kid of any colour wearing the denim tears in the streets. But I don't know. I don't want to cap you down, man. I don't know. Surely after everything you've been through, you would just say no to ever taking a job as a CD of another white-owned company when you have all these complicated racially charged complex you're very passionate clearly about this sort of shit surely you would just say lie in the sand never again am i working for another white-owned company unless i'm working as in partnership but i'm not going to work underneath them as a fucking office person but now nah, let's just keep the door open because i want that like what like what what, what what do you stand on like where is this what's this going shaky shaky anyways continue um I wonder if you wore that blue one as an ode to the Virgil shot. Remember the Virgil shot in New York Times where he's wearing the white, the, the baby blue um, off-white hoodie? I wonder if he's wearing the same thing or that. Um, for now, the freedom of denim tears is what soothes and, sa- and sates um, Mr. Amory. Whether it's his ability to release a Jaffa collaboration with no pushback, are we supposed to hide these scars and never look at these scars again? Oh, he's just not going to stop with the slavery shit. You know, a comic collection themed around black jockeys whose hidden history Miss Emery's father taught him about. Some people don't give me grace that maybe I'm thinking hard, he said, more resigned and frustrated and angry. Some people don't give me grace that I'm maybe thinking too, like, what, you're just too smart for us? Is that what you're trying to say? All right. Ultimately, Mr. Emery and his critics agree that no version of the black experience is universal. My view is I can't tell another black person how to feel about their black experience because black people aren't a monolith. You make it seem like they are, though, innit? <laughs> okay. Says one thing, does the other. He said acknowledging that the, uh, the uncontrollable discourse is in many ways key to his creative project. They have the right to unfollow me. They have the right to leave the comment. They have a right to not buy it, tell other people not to buy it. But what they can't do is change what I'm going to do. Okay, fair play. That's probably the best bit of the whole thing. That's probably the best paragraph of the whole fucking article. Fair play. If that's the way he wants to speak about it. If he's going to, he's basically saying, I'm going to keep talking about race and clothing and whatever and whatever issues on my, with stuff that I make until the end of time. You're free to complain and cry about it. But you're not going to change what I'm going to do. Fair. Fair enough. I just hate you because I think he can offer way more. But if this is what his brand is going to be, this is what he's going to reduce it to. Fair play. Fair play. So big up Tremaine in that regard. Um, exhaustive, painful article. But in the end, you got some decent headshots in there. You got to talk his talk, share his story. And again, complain for the umpteenth time about fucking Supreme. He can't seem to let it go. It seemed to be a horrible time in his life. It came about the worst time in his life. He got the job, I think, what, when Virgil died. Um, it also was the same time he got fucking ill. And you'd imagine you want to talk it, t- not talk about it, just leave it alone. But he can't help not talk about it. So I guess it is what it's, is what it's going to be. Anytime, anytime you hear Tremaine, you're going to hear Supreme. Anytime you hear Supreme, you're going to hear people complain about Tremaine. I guess it is what it is. I guess it is what it blood clot is. What can we do? What can we bloody do?